Can you hear all right, Diego? Yeah, but I don't want to talk because I hear myself. Yeah. Okay, Nito. Okay. Bem-vindos, bem-vindos à Arte Rio Online novamente, aos nossos eventos da Arte Rio Online, nossa nova plataforma, que fica até domingo, dia 25. Por favor, acessem para ver as nossas galerias, as nossas obras, os nossos artistas. Hoje tenho o um prazer enorme de ter novamente dois convidados maravilhosos para a nossa live. Teremos uma conversa entre o curador Jesus Foi Major, que foi é, que é um curador das universidades de universidades da Florida, com a Ela Cisneros, Ela Fontanal Cisneros, uma grande colecionadora, patrona das artes. Ela fundou uma fundação que se chama CIFO, que apoia artistas latino-americanos e mostra obras e faz exibições por, pelo mundo inteiro. Então, eu queria apresentar, agradecer. Graças, Sela. É, muitas graças, Jesus. Thank you so much for uh, being with us in our new platform, our online platform. This is the first time that we're doing an online art fair. So it's a big, big pleasure to have you both with us. This Thanks year, and this new adventure. Thanks thank you, and thank you, Adriel, for having us. Yeah, I am. Um, Ella, I, I promise uh, uh, Maria Luz to do a brief introduction. So I'm going to introduce you, and then we can start having a, our conversation. Perfect. Okay, so um, may, I guess uh, many, or maybe most of you already know. Ella, Ella Fontana Cisneros. So I'm going to be very brief. Uh, she is, as uh, Maria Luz said, she's a, she's a collector, she's a philanthropist, and she's also a writer. In 2002, uh, Ella founded uh, the Cisneros Fontana Arsal Foundation, known as CIFO, in Miami, that promotes artists from Latin America through grants and commissions, exhibitions, and publications. CIFO also is in charge of organizing exhibitions from the ELAS collection and, is, uh, and supports uh, other arts and cultural initiatives. During its 18-year uh, history, CIFO has produced a number of uh, exhibitions here in the US, like uh, in Miami, Los Angeles, New York, and Boston, and also has uh, organized international exhibitions in Palma de Mallorca, in Spain, in Bonn, Germany, Zurich, Switzerland, Cuenca, and Quito, Ecuador, Havana, Cuba, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and also in Lima, Peru. In addition to that, the foundation has published a number of uh, collection catalogs. I will re I, I recommend to to have those catalogs. There, are, all, all of them are amazing publications that are produced from the uh, collection of uh, Ella. In 2011, CIFO expanded its, uh, its presence in the global art community by opening CIFO Europa, Europa in, Bra in Brazil, in Madrid, I'm sorry. Ella also founded the space Miami Art Central in 2003 in Miami. Uh, uh, in that space, she was able to brought import important international art exhibits including a collection of video art from the Centre Pompidou in Paris and solo exhibitions of uh, artists, very well international art, uh, very well known international artists like William Kenridge, uh, Carmen Herrera, that was one of the very first exhibition of Carmen Herrera in, in, the, in the United States. And uh, also she exhibited there Ana Maria Mayorino's work, Victor Grippo, Horta Citadin, um, among others, uh, important exhibitions. Then, um, during the last 20 years, Ella uh, has uh, published several books on exhibitions and on her collection. There is a wonderful book that was published by Turner, uh, 
libros in Madrid. It's a 500 pages book with uh, all the Latin American uh, collection of uh, geometric art. Uh, and she also published uh, recently in 2017 uh, a book commemorating the 15 years of the Cisneros Fontanals Foundation with all the artists that have gone through, uh, had uh, gotten the, the grant from CIFO, and also a, a very important book that was uh, uh, to accompany the exhibition Adio Utopia, Goodbye Utopia, that was uh, present a, a, a Cuban art uh, uh, exhibition that uh, included work from the 1950s up until 2014, and that was uh, presented at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston and the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. Uh, Ella has also been a member of the board of uh, several important institutions, art institutions like Tate America's Foundation, the New Museum, El Museo del Barrio in New York, ICA Miami, the Spanish Institute of New York, Art Basel Foundation, Miami Art Museum, and of course, the C4 uh, Art, Art Foundation. So, uh, welcome. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to have uh, a conversation with you again, Ella. Uh, we know each other since uh, a long time ago, and we have done many things together. I'm also, uh, I am uh, really proud of all of the things that we have been able to put out there. Uh, so when when uh, Maria Luz invited us to to have a conversation, I thought, well, let's try, and we spoke about that. Let's try to do something more more casual. Let's uh, try to speak about what has been your experience as a collector. I tried to do something uh, simple. I sit down and I uh, wrote some questions. And at the end of the day, I wrote like 45 different questions. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, try, let's go one by one. Eh? <laughs> let, let's, try, let's try to do some of those 45 questions that I wrote for you. So let's, uh, uh, what, do you what do you think if we begin with the, uh, the beginning? What, uh, why don't you talk to us about how you begin as a, as a collector? Fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Art Rio, for inviting me. And Jesus, such a pleasure, like always, to get back to you and uh, as a friend and and uh, and all the experiences that we've been doing together for so many years. It's a pleasure always to come back and and talk to you. Uh, well, I think I've. I've done or said this so many times. I started very young. I was uh, a young girl that was trying to be an artist. I loved art since the beginning, since very young. And then later on in life, well, life changes so fast, so rapidly. I went back to, to Venezuela and my life changed. So that wasn't possible. And I ended up in uh, the year, uh, I think it was 1970. One around 1971, opening uh, an art gallery in Caracas with a friend. So for a couple of years, uh, I was very young, and I started, you know, uh, collecting Latin American art. Of course, Venezuelan first because that was uh, what was as accessible. Even though later on, I bought, uh, uh, I had a, a very good mentor, Clara Sujo, who was very close to to me. She had a gallery next to us, and. She was always trying to teach me about American art and other things. So I, I was learning. I was starting that way. And then later on, I married and I started traveling through Latin America. So I had an opportunity of getting together, you know, with artists and understanding a little bit more about Latin American art for, a, for many years. Uh, I think that uh, that was my primary thing, you know, collecting Latin American art. Then in the years um, around the 90s, eight, at, the, at the beginning of the 90s, I stopped collecting because I was very much involved into other philanthropic things. You know, I started some foundations, I worked with the United Nations, et cetera. So I stopped for a while collecting art until 1996, in which I came back with, uh, of course, on the 80s, around the 80s, before, before the 90s, I already was visiting a lot of, of, of art fairs 
in Europe, everywhere. And uh, I made a big change in into what I was looking at, you know. And, and the, my, we have we have a uh, presentation with uh, some images. Wonderful. That maybe we, then let's let's do maybe it. Maybe we maybe we can show yeah. some of the images that we have. Uh, Fine. Uh, yes, of our course. friends. If we're going to talk about the eight, 1983, 84. But I, I need uh, I need somebody to share the presentation. Maria Luz, okay, there you go. So okay, <laughs> fine. No, that's a, that's a picture inside of uh, of the warehouse. Uh, yes, the one uh, in mm -hmm. the warehouse uh, yeah. in the uh, in Miami, right? Park, no? Right, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. So there are some of uh, of the works that the, that you were uh, acquiring in the eighties are uh, by these uh, Latin American artists like. Uh, Wilfredo Lam, Wilfredo Lam, who was Cuban and and uh, very close to to my heart, you know, and uh, I was in in Europe and I was I had uh, in Paris the 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 closeness to those artists. I mean, not with Wilfredo exactly, but with other Latin American artists that were living in in Paris at that time. There yeah. is also Gunter Gerso, Gunter which Gerso, but that came later. After uh, I confronted, I was confronted with a uh, piece of art in uh, in at the FIAC that really changed the way I was looking at art. At, at that time, I was very much involved and and loved uh, uh, the masters, etc. I was trying to look for a, a soto with colors and etc. and suddenly a friend of mine said, come, I want you to see this piece of art. You are looking for a Soto. This is wonderful, 1961. I went to see it and I couldn't understand anything. I look at it and, and something was bothering me. Something was really taking me into that piece of, you know, all these wires and, and things that I couldn't understand. But in deep inside, I was like, you know, this is this troubles me, but also is telling me that this is something I should look into it. So I bought that piece of art, and from there on, I fell in love with abstraction, and it's been mostly, you know, the core of the collection is on abstraction, because later on the the years went by, and the nineties, the beginning of the nineties, I sold more most of the, you know, more. Uh, uh, Figurative things that I had and old masters that I have from Latin America. So, as, uh, also in the eighties, you. Uh, I was, for example, Alejandro Otero. You know that piece exactly. You know, Alejandro's uh, brother was uh, working with us in Pepsi, and he was all the time telling me, you know, you want, you need to meet my my brother, and my brother is in need, and this and that, and he brought this piece into the office, and I fell in love with it. Is that? Is a maquette of one of the big sculptures that Otero did, and it moves when the air, you know, shocks it. It, it moves. It's wonderful. And uh, at that time, I didn't have, you know, I had to count with my husband. He was the one who had the money, and he, he kept saying, "No, oh, I don't understand any of these that you're buying." But you know, and so it was kind of, a, of a, an uphill situation. But I got it, and uh, and it was in my office for a long time. This was around 19. So after after those initial works, then you start uh, in the nineties. You said like really uh, thinking about creating a collection. Well, you know, one day I was I confronted. I, I found a friend of mine, and he said, "Oh, you are a collector. You're becoming a collector." And I thought, of, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't doing it because I wanted to collect things or collect art. I was like. Wow, I suddenly understood that yes, I had become a collector. So it was nothing at to that point that was, you know, organized or orderly or, or in an orderly way done. So from there on, I decided, okay, uh, yes, I am, and I have to focus. I have to look into what I really like. And, and when I came back, you know, from from those years of philanthropy and working for for children and other foundations, et cetera, I stopped and said, okay, I would 
love to continue the trend that I started with, it, with Soto. And I started looking into the abstraction in Latin America and, uh, and in the beginning of the 90s. That was in the beginning of the 90s. And then I stopped. And then after that, I also uh, opened the collection to much more of a wire world thing. But talking about art in, in Latin America, abstraction or geometrical abstraction in Latin America, uh, I think that uh, that was the main factor, the main central thing that was taking me into looking into that art and what was happening in Brazil, for example, and in Uruguay when Torres Garcia started. And so uh, you have there, you know, works from the collection that I have acquired during those times, you know. We, we, we made a selection of uh, some of uh, Brazilian artists and other Latin American artists in, geom uh, in your uh, geometric section of the collection. If you want to talk a little bit uh, about these pieces, you have a Yes, well, the Marco Rero, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I don't know if you want to pass by. Some, I, I started flying or going to Brazil because we had, since the 70s, because we had Pepsi in Brazil at that time. Um, but uh, until only until the end of eight, the eighties, beginning of the nineties, I was really very much in touch with those artists. And uh, for example, this Ligia, Ligia Clark Azulo, I acquired later on at, at the end of of the nineties, and uh, it this was a piece that was in the collection of uh, uh, Raquel Arnaud, for example and uh, very special because it's the only Casulo I think it was painted, you know? And, uh, and well, I flew many times after that to Brazil and I met with a lot of dealers and, uh, and personal people, you know, that, uh, uh, that, and that's how I started acquiring all the Brazilians, you know, Mira Schendel, you know, Peto Grafico, and I love, for example, Mira. I think Mira Schendel was so, you know, so feminine in all her ways of, of creating those works. I was really touched. And I had a lot of pieces from, from Eto Mira Schendel. Yeah, you, uh, this is uh, a Teja, right? A Teja, number one Teja from uh, Ligia Pape. It's hardly it's very difficult to really look at it because the lights are, this is such, they're very thin thing, you know, uh, wires attached to both walls, you know, but I, I think that probably the Teja, it's been, uh, uh, she did a lot of them after that and, and uh, many has been in, in exhibitions and uh, in, uh, and this one too, it's been in, you know, the exhibition we did in Sao Paulo, and uh, and that's uh, one one of my favorite artists, Gego Hertulis Gosni. Uh, she's Venezuelan. You know her very well, Jesus. Yeah, ger ger German Venezuelan, right? But, but right. Uh, she did all her work uh, in in Venezuela. In Venezuela, and her work, you know, is finely done by her. You know, all the it's it's a pity that we cannot see the close up of that, but you would see that all those links of the wires are done in a very systematical way, but also very refined way, all done by her. Yeah, she's uh, 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 a great artist and, and, and she's supposed to get um, uh, the retrospective at the Guggenheim Foundation. I think it, yes. was, it was just announced that it was postponed because of COVID to 2022 so but it's uh, uh it was uh it was in at Maspi last year no yeah uh-huh and she's been i mean she's well known right now all over the world and uh, she was just uh, i mean one of my favorite artists also julio a great friend julio lepart this is a piece it's a huge piece it's uh, 70 meters by five meters high and julio did this in the year 1962 i think 63 and he won with this piece the uh, Paris Biennale that year. And uh, 
it's all uh, also it's a pity we don't have a close up of that but it's very thin uh fine we have here we have ah uh, well that's an yeah it was placed during uh, in c for for a while during one of the year puzzles or one of the years of course this is is really an internal piece is not to be place outside, but this was placed for a while outside and it reflects, each of the pieces reflects part of the environment. And you can see, you know, in, in the pieces, the the sky reflected, you know, and, and also in the the building in the back, our, our central building in the back. Carmen Herrera, one a wonderful artist that I, I'm very close to and that I have some some maybe comments to say in 2002, uh, I met the work of Carmen by, by some friends, some galleries called me, this is a human, you have to see it, concrete. I thought she was a young girl doing, you know, concrete art, so, because I've never heard, you know, of anybody living in New York that was doing concrete art. So I arrived and he said, no, he's not. I asked, how old is she? He said, well, she's around 89. <laughs> So that was my surprise, and I look around, and uh, there are other. I don't see. I don't know if you have other words from her. Please. We have, yeah. When we go, well, we're, we're, we're going to show some of the pieces that you have in your Cuban art collection. Ah, oh, well, then I'll, and, uh, I'll, I'll, most of them. The rest but, of the story, but for that, for that, this is Gerritz, Matthias Gerritz. Uh, Matthias Gerritz is an architect. Was an architect and an artist uh, in. Uh, in Mexico, uh, the the name is German, so it's a uh, it's a German. Uh, I don't know. He was born in Germany, actually. He, he was, born. yeah. He was he was German, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's a it's a big piece, also like uh, four meters fifty or something. Yeah, you have that there, two hundred and eight. It's a it's a big piece, all metal. There are four pieces like this. One is in Camino Real, much bigger than this. And another one, I think, is at the museum. And uh, this one, and another one, I don't know if somebody, pers you know, in a private collection, in Mexico has it. So you have a, uh, you have your your collection. Uh, uh, it's um, uh, as focused at, uh, in uh, Latin American geometric art, but then it's also uh, has so other many other. Uh, yes. collections inside of your collection. For example, something that you did that uh, uh, it looks uh, like completely different to geometric art was a collection of contemporary international photography. So I would like you to speak uh, about that, how, how you start doing that collection, and then maybe we can uh, speak about the relationship between photography and geometry because yeah. there is also that in your collection. You right, you, you yeah. Deal with that uh, relationship. There are two two areas. There is the photography, the contemporary photography, and there's another one that is the modernist photography. And I will tell you about that. This photography, I, I in in the around ninety six, ninety eight. I, I started collecting worldwide art, and I found that there was so much photography everywhere. So I started focusing in photography. It was very interesting because at that time, I think the world or, or the collectors were only or mostly buying photography. And so, you know, it's like paintings and things came back again into the market later on. So I, uh, for example, this photography is was a, a, a gift given to me by by Marina. This is a friend and, and a fantastic artist, performing art, artist, Marina Bramovich. And uh, it, it is a photograph from one of the first performances she did in Naples, Italy, in which she there was a table full of, of things, a scissors and, and a, 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 a gun and uh, cigarettes and people could take anything from that table and uh, do, you know, use it on her own skin. So people would take a, 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 a lighted cigarette and you know, push it into her skin or all, all the way all until um, there was a gun with one bullet and somebody took the gun 
and then the galleries came running and stop it. But it was one of her greatest performance and she was very young there. Yeah, and there are some other uh, women photographers in your collection too. Oh yes, you have, you have Yuta Bars here and uh, and Lambry and many others, you know, a lot of, uh, this, this, this guy Raswitz, that's uh, the famous uh, uh, building uh, in Sao Paulo, where the Biennale takes place. Cicillo, oh. Mater Cicillo Materazzo, Amelia. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Francesco Goodman, Francesca was a, an uh, Italo-American artist, and she, she died very young, at 22. And uh, she started making art at 15, 16. All, all of these works were, she was very young. Most of her work is about disappearance and her own disappearance into the wall, into many things. In, in this uh, space, she's sitting and then you see the shadow on the, on the wooden floor. She did a lot of great, wonderful things. And she died, unfortunately, very young. But if you see the videos that she did when she was 15, 16, it was like really, really up, you know, upscale, you know. Now I want you to tell me, uh, how how do you connect uh, those two? This is another this woman is photographer. Yeah, offer, another woman offer. photographer. Lisa, Lisa Lambry also. How, how did you connect photography and geometry, Ella? I don't know, It's the, I have to tell you that if you see the photography, except for two or three or a very little part of the photography group of contemporary art that I, I bought were uh, mostly either architecture, was tend to the architectural or abstraction. You know, both are things that interest me, of course, but also it, it, is, it was an impulsive thing, you know, when I was going to by photography suddenly, I was attracted to this sort of, of photography. And that's how I ended up with a lot of, of uh, photography that has to do with that. In here, for example, you see, this is a collection of only modernist photography from uh, uh, Latin America. Uh, in 2004, talking to, I was planning an exhibition, which you know about uh, uh, geometric abstraction, sites of, of, of Latin American abstraction in Miami, and um, talking to the uh, curator at that time, Ledesma, I said, well, how come, you know, you don't have so much photography, and, and this time, this, this period, there is no photography. He told me, it would be wonderful if we could add up into this exhibition, this sort of photography. So I started making uh, the in <laughs> research, and I had a lot of people working in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, looking for artists or for a photographers that at that time, they were not even considered artists. They were working for, um, media for how you call it journals or for magazines but they had a very good internal work that they were experimenting with so there is a lot of ex experiences in all this uh, photography about uh, I'm sorry ex experiment so hear me yeah. or I'm not going to hear you something fell something I need a technical mm -hmm. assistance. <laughs> so, I, I, do you hear me? I'm, uh, yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I continue talking. Yeah, even though I don't hear you. <laughs> I don't hear anybody. Anyway, so in this photography, you can see uh, all these uh, photographers were uh, investi investigating and, and testing things in their own laboratories, you know, and doing things with abstraction, you know, in, in the total... Uh, I don't hear anything. Can you, can you hear me? Uh, wait, what? Uh, uh, okay. Well, I continue. I don't hear you, but you hear me. That's the most important thing. So here you you see Paulo Pires, which is Brazilian, and uh, a lot of Brazilians. I found that, that there was uh, the Institute Banderantes there, who at that time did many things with the photographers, even though you know in other parts like. Uh, maybe Venezuela and um, 
excuse me, Venezuela and uh, other parts. Argentina also had a lot of photographers in that time, and I I, I did find a lot of photography in Argentina too. The, less the, in, less in, uh, in, um, for example, Colombia or uh, there was a, a very good. And I don't know if you find it there, uh, uh, but we had. Uh, a photographer in Venezuela who was uh, Leo Matisse. Leo Matisse. And Leo no, Matisse was in Colombia, but he lived like 50 years in Venezuela. He was considered a, a, a Venezuelan photographer. When you have Samir uh, on the, I'm sorry, the last one, Samir, uh, 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 Samir, Samir Mar Macarius, who is also from Argentina, you know. So yeah. I found a lot of them. And, and uh, actually, I bought like almost 300 photographs from that time. I, I made the mistake of not buying the negatives, which I should have, but but uh, the collection is quite good. And at that time, it was like something very new, very new because there was no one really looking into this. And then it became very popular, no? no. Yeah, and then after that, we, we, uh, we included the photography in the exhibition with the abstraction, with the... Uh, Latin American construction uh, artists, and they became very popular after that. A lot of museums started calling me, where did you get this, and how to get more, etc. cetera. Uh, Ella, can, can, you can hear me now, right? I can hear you, yes. Okay. So uh, we we were thinking that maybe we can have uh, uh, some questions at uh, the end of our conversation. Wonderful. Yes, I love to, to hear what the people you know, want to ask her. So we have uh, here some other photographers that are uh, uh, focusing in architecture, which is the like the, the, the common thread, let's say, between uh, the contemporary photographer and the modernist photographer Correct. that you have. In Correct. I, I bought a lot of, uh, well, she's, she's not just, uh, I think Canadian, um, Melanie Smith, and she lives in, in Mexico. But uh, I, in the night, at the end of the 90s, I bought a lot of photography from, uh, from Germany. That's uh, Ed Ruscha, and, and you have Struth, which is part of the German photographers, that uh, the movement that uh, was very important. In. Or can, Candida Hofer, that we already yeah, showed yeah, the work of her. So, Ruth and Struth. This is a, 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 a Chinese. Uh, Photographer, Wang Kuing Son, and uh, <coughs> it's a big, big piece, but it's fantastic also. And he is a photographer also. Uh, we um, have here uh, another this, another of our exhibitions that we did in during um, in, uh, in the first exhibitions that we did in um, in uh, Cifo, at Cifo, you know, with all of these. Artists and photographers. You know. That was uh, curated by Simon Baker and Tanya Barson, right? Uh huh. Correct. They were the, the curators at that time. They were the curators of photography at the Tate, mm -hmm. and they created the, the show. That's the truth. That's Gersky. I'm sorry, Gersky. And the next to it, there is some Italian photography. So, uh, and this and is a wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful from Cuba. That's a. Uh, that's one of the uh, photographies of the Cuban uh, um, jails. It was, it's, a, it's a panopticon, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I, I wanted to uh, uh, present this image of uh, Stan Douglas' uh, work in, in La Habana to connect to another of your passions, Ella, uh, mm -hmm. Cuba. You have, you have been uh, uh, you have been uh, uh, collecting first uh, Cuban geometric art and then contemporary art. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, Cuban art collection that you have you have been building in the last years before yes. we start, uh, uh, let uh, people ask questions? Yes, in 2009, I was very interested in helping the Cuban artists because they had no connectivity through internet and our program for the uh, prices for the CIFO 
was very, uh, we had very little humans because they had everything we did was digital and the connectivity was very bad in Cuba. So I started going there to help the artists. And through that, in 2009, I was uh, through a friend uh, introduced to the Cuban movement. There were two movements, one that is called the 11 Abstract Painters, who was first in 53, and then to the 10 concrete artists who started later on 1957. And uh, I was surprised to see all of these wonderful things that they were doing at that time. And the connectivity of, for example, Sandu Darie with uh, the Madi movement. He was part of the Madi movement. This is Sandu Darie, Sandu Darie. So I started uh, immediately collecting them all. And I, when I uh, opened, uh, or I did the, the book on abstraction, Latin American abstraction with the collection, I included Cuba in, in them because I thought that the Cubans were part, really part of all of the movement that was taking place, even though they they were very short in that uh, part because uh, in the around the um, 1957 when they started this is uh, really the movement. It only lasted two years. In 1959, when the revolution came, it stopped. You know, all everything that had to do with abstraction in the island. But uh, I have a lot of, that's also Sandu Darie. Very interesting, this piece, because it is a piece that is uh, technical. You can move everything. You can move it around. It's very rudimentary done. It's done on wood. But uh, you can build the pieces as you like, as you do. And this, I would say, is more very similar to the Bishop of Lydia Clark. But he did it much more, you know, he did it in the 50s, at the end of the 50s. And it, it was meant like Lydia Clark Bishops to be mani manipulative. Or say, it, Manipulated, yes. People should, you know, just work with it and, and change the, the look, etc. And then, uh, the, this is uh, some Carmen of the pieces uh, by the Carmen Herrera that, that, that you have. You have a... Yes. I don't know, 10 pieces by Carmen Herrera. 10 pieces by like Carmen Herrera. I, when I... I, I I bought the pieces, I said, she's wonderful, and I want to give her an exhibition. So I sent somebody to make a, a, a film, you know, with her, because I thought, well, if we, something happens, you know, and she's old, we might lose the information. And so in 2000, I think it was 2004, when we did the exhibition of Carmen here at the MAC, it was, you know, nobody knew about her, I, I really, uh, um, was I think instrumental in in giving the Tate, for example, a piece of art, uh, and tr calling my friends and moving her into you know somewhere into the very well known uh, world of the arts, which is she's she deserves to be and she is right now and she she's part of it today. Yeah, and, and well, yeah. All of those. And then to uh, end our conversation, I would like to ask you about all the... Uh, That's a wonderful it, artist that I love. And we, we had them in an exhibition also in Sao Paulo that we did, you know, Gustavo Perez Monzon. He's yeah. Cuban and he's fantastic. This, he lives in Mexico. He's Cuban-Mexican. This, this is an image from the installation at the... At the uh, museum. It's in Sao Paulo, I don't remember the name of uh, of It's called uh, um, Movimientos Sensibles. Mov mov Movimientos Sensibles. My, my, my Brazilian is not too good. My Portuguese is not too good. But um, uh, sensible movements, you know. And that, that's, of course, another artist that I love, Cuban artist, Esto, uh, Elso, which they're going to do a retrospective of him. He died very young, also 33. But he was uh, an artist who really was uh, uh, a vanguardist artist. He, he did many things that at the time were, were not done in Cuba. And he believed in America as one and Latin America and being united by the food, you know, the, the how do you call it, corn and many other things. So he did quite a few things. In the Venice when he represented Cuba at the Venice Bienal. Uh, but he died very young. And now I think he's being recognized and there's going to be a, a good retrospective done by Museo del Barrio and probably will fly to, to Spain 
and to Mexico also to the Muac. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Saavedra, no? Saavedra, he's fantastic, also Cuban, contemporary. So he's a lot of fun when he does his work. And he's a fantastic work, person and also a good, uh, as we, he's been a good teacher for these new generations of, uh, of artists. And, and uh, another work by esto, uh, uh, my, my memory. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to remember the name, I'm, I forgot. He, I don't know why. Um, what's the name? Uh, he, he, he wrote one of the essays for yeah, you. He's a fantastic critic. I, uh, he's a friend, but my Alzheimer to my German is working on me today. <laughs> uh, um, to, to, Tobito, no. This no, is, my God. It's, uh, it, uh, I, ha I have the. I, ha I have it in my. Eh, Eligio Tonel. 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 Oh Tonel. What is Tonel? And then we have uh, Rene Francisco Rodriguez. And Francisco, and uh, uh, this was a word done by both Rene Francisco and Pon Juan. Uh -huh. And uh, you can see the Russian uh, workmen work in, uh, which was in Cuba at that time, part of the of the environment and instead of having you know the the the, the tool to work and it has a, a brush and the brush comes out of the painting is a very interesting painting this is one of the prohibited uh, paintings that in cuba uh, in the 80s at the end of the 80s many of the exhibitions done uh, in cuba were using these figures uh, like uh, Fidel Castro, and they were all prohibited by the Cuban government. So many were closed either because of the, uh, some sort of repression, because they were trying to, to talk about the repression in Cuba, and also because of the use of symbols and, and, uh, on, and people from the government inside. And this is it's, it's a Toirac, no? Toirac. Mm -hmm. A piece by Torak. This is Los Carpinteros, my friends that I love, all of them. Unfortunately, they're, they're broken up right now, but this is a piece when they were all together. Uh, one of the, of the book shelves that they, or book uh, libraries that they did, and this is one of the maquettes, big maquette. Uh, Wilfredo, a friend, Wilfredo Prieto. And this is a very tiny, tiny pea. When you, we're seeing it, it's very big, but when you see, and it's the world on a P, it's the world, the, the big world on this little tiny, tiny you know, grain of, of a P. He's so a global he's, artist. He's a global artist and he is fantastic. And this is uh, Yahima Carrasana, which also did, uh, this is a video, a still of a video in which she is having a, a tutorial on art on, on abstraction. And then she's talking about, you know, the different artists that became famous. And she's, what she's doing this, she's painting her, uh, her nails with the artist. Uh, this is the, the, black, the Black Cross by Malevich. Black Cross by Malevich. Malevich. And this is Castro, Javier Castro. Castro, yeah. He's very good, also a performer. I'm sorry. So let's uh, d uh, open to the uh, what a friend. pleasure. Uh, yeah. yeah. What a pleasure hearing you both, uh, Ella Fontanals, um, and seeing how it all began. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it's been a long way. And how it's, it continues. And how it, it continues, continues for it sure. Does, of course, it continues. But I love to hear to the your... regret of my my people at the warehouse <laughs> who keep telling me, "Don't bring anything else. We don't have space." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where do we? Do you have? Uh, a, uh, you put everything in storage. You have yes, a, I have a big storage. A big storage, in, which you know, right now I'm I'm receiving people from France and people from around the world just to see the, the uh, warehouse, because it's quite interesting, all the work, some are hanged, some are kept, but 
very interested uh, to to visit sometime I, I will do it through my channel and see for everybody to come and see it interesting i have a question for you um how do you discover new artists do you travel to fairs you go to studios you, how do you to tell you the research? truth you know it's interesting when you go to fairs because sometimes you know you find people that are new and different i the latin american fairs you know the smaller fairs and there's always someone that you've never seen that somebody even in the uh, one of the last art reels that i found i found a a, a, a piece of art that i loved and it was a, a young girl from uh, vasconcelos from bahia and you know and now i have it in my house in, in madrid and everybody when they see it how wonderful no and those are the things that i really love i love really uh, finding new people, uh, understanding that, that also some of the things that have been done by people who very well are not probably well known and discovering. The discovery part, together with the uh, things that I've done, for example, in the research with, uh, with Jesus, you know, talking with them with Jesus, we started many years ago talking about conceptual art from Latin America and conceptual art in general. And, you know, I, I took and decided, you know, that I would do a research on that and started collecting that period. And, and that's what I do, you know, I try to at least finish you know, certain parts of the collection, or not finished because I'm always buying, you know, and adding up to that, but to certain areas of the collection that are very specific and that they, you know, they, they need, you know, certain pieces, etc. So I like that. I like looking into new things and, and researching into, you know, parts of the art. Does it happen that sometimes you fall in love with a work that does, it does not fit that, um, that abstraction, that focus and... Well, you know, it's not only abstraction. I have an area that is photography, I have another oh, area that is video. You know, I started the video collection without really even thinking because artists that I like started to work with different medias and, and video too. So I started acquiring videos because of the artist and not because I wanted to acquire. And later on, it, it, you know, it started to enlarge and enlarge and I have a big collection of video right now. So it, it happens sometimes like that. It's, you know, most of the things that I have has a certain trend. Uh, and even though, you know, I might like something even though that is outside the line that I always call, uh, collect, most of the things that I look and, and even curators when they come to the collection to do uh, exhibitions, etc., with the collection, everybody tells me you have a very straightforward line. It's easy to make up an, an exhibition because there are certain things that you can see in the collection that are systematically and continuously because it's my eye. Yes. So, you know, I, I, I rarely look into something that is not, you know, inside of what I like. And, what and could you talk a little bit about uh, your project, a CIFO that has been very important for Latin American artists, which Jesus Juan Major uh, was director and curator. Yes. And we had the, the wonderful years. experience to have uh, Jesus with us and, and develop what is today, I think, uh, a program that have helped more than 150 uh, different uh, artists and we what we do is we have uh, each year we have collectors from all around Latin America who uh, give sends us projects of artists. So it's really it's really like filtered through the collectors through the uh, curators. And then we receive around 180 to 200 uh, uh, different artists with different projects. Then we call each year different uh, curators from that uh, board that we have of, of uh, Latin American curators and they pick the finalists. They, they pick uh, in between the three categories that we have. We have the category of uh, um, emerging artists and mid-career and then uh, 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 well-known artists and, 
an achievement, uh, uh, an arts achievement, no? So it, they are the ones who really choose the winners. And uh, for example, if we have 10, 10 prizes every year, around 12 goes to the board of directors. So we want the board to really get involved into the last uh, choice, but in, it's mostly done by the curators. And then we do, we bring the, the, unfortunately this last year, we have not been able to do the exhibitions that we were going to do it if it was uh, in Colombia because of the pandemic and, and that stopped everything, no? But usually we bring, uh, we, we, for many years, we brought the collect, the, the artists into our museum here in Miami and, uh, and they did an exhibition. Each one, you know, brought their own pieces. And that way we could, you know, it was good to introduce them to different people, you know, outside the countries and to make them known outside. But uh, three years ago, we took the decision of, of traveling exhibitions through either Latin America or US in different parts, because I thought we thought that it was really better for the artists to have that a wide opening range of different people and not only, you know, here in Miami. So the last two, three years we've been doing it outside. And now we are also going to exhibit the CIFO collection, which is, uh, which is different to your own personal collection, right? Yes, there are two different collections, different. Mm -hmm. The CIFO collections is done, is, is, has become a collection after the commissions of all the arts that uh, were commissioned during the, all these years. And then my collection is a private mm -hmm. collection has nothing to do with, with the foundation. Thank you, wonderful. Just before we, we um, finish, I just wanna ask you one question. One advice you would give to young collectors here in Brazil, we have many people that are starting to buy and collect. Um, what advice would, would you give them? Well, I would say that, you know, collecting is not an elite thing because you can do collecting of many you know, pieces of art from the very well-known artists to a new emerging artist. And I, I would say to the young people, collect the things or the, the artists of your age or your generation, because they will grow up with you during the time. Mm -hmm. And when you, you'll be 40 or 60, you will have all these uh, new artists that are really becoming the artists of the moment. But also I will tell them to research. You know, you have time and the good and wonderful thing about collecting is the process. It's the process of understanding the artist, understanding the art, looking at it, all, you know, that, you know, the fairs and things that we have. Well, right now, unfortunately, we're all at home, but today you have more access to more, more fairs through during, you know, through the internet and more access to information about each artist. So please do research, do look at many, many things. And if you like things very, very much, look after it, see what they really mean and who are they and who are, who's the artist and who is the galleries and talk to the galleries. The galleries are always the people who are going to know a lot about you know about art and what you like and and listen to them mm -hmm. thank you thank you ella thank you jesus well, thank thank you. You. it's been very I very and, and, to us too and to all of you hope that brazil gets better with the pandemic yeah we will we hope go there to. soon very yes, soon please. i love going to brazil i want to go to brazil so Come get and welcome visit us. all of you <laughs> Take care. We'll wait Take for care you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.